So Greg, tell us, how does Facebook work at the highest level? How does there's a machine somehow behind Facebook that's making all this stuff happen around the world? What does it do? Yeah, so um, you, can, you can think of um, Facebook as um, being run by multiple different clusters and lots of different data centers around the world. Um, the, the, the primary piece of our architecture that you interact with from your browser um, every time you visit Facebook or, or use one of our platform applications or, or um, work with one of our partners that's using Facebook Connect, the primary thing that you're interacting with is our web, what we call our web tier, which is a, a large number of, of servers running a web server, an HTTP server, that is backed by uh, a, a programming language and uh, runtime system called HPHP, which is mm -hmm. our own outgrowth of PHP um, that we built to uh, have better performance than the, the sort of classic open source PHP. We have mm -hmm. ourselves since open sourced HPHP so that everybody in the world that's using PHP can benefit by these enhancements that mm -hmm. we made. So that system sort of fronts all the interactions. It okay. terminates the HTTP connections. It's mm -hmm. the piece that um, sort of looks at who it is that's um, accessing things, mm -hmm. pulls all of the data together from uh, another tier that I'll talk about in a second, and um, then renders the page into HTML, sends that HTML over the wire to the, the user's browser, and services all the secondary requests from the user's browser to grab images and the CSS and the JavaScript that are used to... There's a bunch of machines behind that primary machine. There's a bunch of machines behind that um, that uh, hold the data, that um, front the databases that hold even more data, and that otherwise provide services to that web tier to enable um, enable serving the site. So, so you've told us about a, um, a sort of a web tier that does all the work of trans or, or communicating with the end user. You talked about also a services tier, I believe, that, yep. that, that gives you quicker access to the, to the data behind the scenes, other yep. tiers? Yeah, so it's, it's primarily, we, we fold a lot of things into the notion of the service tier. There are lots of different kinds. The most important layer of the service tier today is the memcache tier that I talked a little bit about. There are other service tiers, for example, news feed ranking happens on a separate set of services, mm -hmm. uh, a separate service tier. Um, and then the, the, then the furthest back tier is the uh, database tier, mm -hmm. um, which is the permanent record of all of the things um, that are uh, uh, happening on the site. You know? mm -hmm. And that's a place where we need to be sure when you try to delete something that it gets deleted in that tier and that um, mm -hmm. the, the information is gone. And, and when you aren't trying to delete something, that we never lose those data, right? Mm -hmm. So that we're honoring the user's wishes about which data we're keeping and which data we're getting rid of and mm -hmm. so forth. Then there are also a couple of um, areas um, where things are happening behind the scenes and are a little bit less coupled to the end user interactions with mm -hmm. our website mm -hmm. and with our, our platform services. Um, so for example, I mentioned the data infrastructure team that I work with. That team is responsible for um, warehousing the log data and making it easily available to um, for, for generating reports. Mm -hmm. If we're trying to generate a report for an advertiser to see um, how many clicks they got mm -hmm. on their advertisements, how many impressions they received, how many distinct users saw the impression, uh, saw the advertisement, mm -hmm. how many distinct users clicked, mm -hmm. how much money, you know, this is how we run our, our, our books, making sure that we are charging people correctly 